Yeah, we welcome you back to our VSIN studios uh, here at the uh, South Point Hotel and Casino, South Las Vegas Boulevard. What a, what a great day this is on Super Sunday. But uh, such a pleasure for me to be on Sirius XM Radio because uh, spending much of the year up in Montana, I'm, uh, I'm one of their best customers. And then one of my favorite channels in the afternoon is driving along the highway of Montana, thinking about a cold one, going to outlaw country. And here's my man, Mojo Nixon. It is such a pleasure, Mojo, to talk to you, lad, on Super Sunday. How you doing? Brett, I am doing great. It is great to talk to you. I thought you retired. <laughs> you know, my wife wanted me out of the house, so I came out of retirement, Mojo. And don't, don't, don't ever retire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in fact, I gave you I, I gave you a shout out on Outlaw Country about a, when they were, you know, said you were doing your last game. I gave a full shout out to you with a full "You're listening live, Brent Musburger, <laughs> Outlaw Country." You can't beat him, folks. If you haven't heard him on my radio, he's on all the time in the afternoon. Mojo, I know you love sports. I don't know that you care about Duke, but you do love sports. So let's uh, let's talk about today's Super Bowl game, my friend. What do you think? You know, I was been. Uh, I think that the Patriots are not only going to cover. I think they're going to win. They'll win by ten or more. It's hard to go to the Super Bowl the first time and win, and it's hard to beat Belichick and Brady when they are on a mission from God to to, to shove that trophy into Roger Goodell's face. You know, you are exactly right. We haven't, we haven't spoken about that mojo, but can you imagine after uh, Tom Brady served his suspension and uh, he never agreed with the penalty and the, the commissioner still to this day says that the appeals court upheld it. What they really upheld was his authority to pass out the penalty. Right, his right to do it. Right. Yeah, exactly. It. He didn't say that, that Tom was good. I tell you, Mojo, because well, I tell all my friends this, I tell them, go back and get the play of that Colt Patriot game on the day in question. Go look at the stats in the first half for Brady when he was supposed to have been using those illegal footballs. Then go look at his stats in the second half after the league says they seized the footballs and reinflated them, you would say, not guilty. I'm telling you, Mojo, there was no case there, my well, friend. Well, I also think the, 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 the referee should be in charge of the footballs, not the, not, the, not the quarterbacks, not the teams. The referee should be in charge of the footballs, and they, you know, they should work out a deal if the quarterbacks want them a certain way or something. But the NFL is crazy to let the quarterbacks be in charge of the footballs. You know, and plus, even if the balls were underinflated, it's a minor crime. They acted like, 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 like maybe he had killed three or four people. <laughs> That's my man, Mojo. Likes the Patriots. So much talking to you. Just enjoyed it, Mojo. From time to time, we'll be checking in. Can't wait to get your prediction when North Carolina plays Duke again, buddy. <laughs> oh, you don't. And I was waiting. I put my house money on Carolina now to win the championship, or should I wait a few weeks? Ja, no, put it on right now. You probably get a better price. Nobody, you know, why not? <laughs> Brent, Brent uh, I, I really appreciate you giving me a call, and I love what you're doing. And I'll be telling everybody on Outlaw Country to tune into your new show. You got it. Thanks, Mojo. Thanks a lot. And uh, we welcome you to the studio and another friend of mine in the desert, Roxy Roxborough, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, some of you who follow the gaming industry know how very important he was through the years, now retired. But he put that line out that you always saw early in the week. Was it the crowd over at the Stardust, Roxy? Is that, uh, is that a, what I remember over there? Yeah, in the year 80s, the Stardust was the hub of uh, sports betting. They put out the first line, and I worked with Scotty Shuttler there to develop oh, yeah. the first line, yeah. And did you allow some of the bigger bettors to bet into that line before the public actually got around? How, how did that work? Well, Scotty was the first guy to do it um, democratically. He opened the line up for everybody at the same time, but they used to draw lottery cards to see who'd get in line first, right? And uh, they took the main limit right off the bat. And before, it was always uh, 
sort of insiders getting to play into the line, but Scotty just said, look, you show up with cash, you get in line, you play. You know, uh, Roxy, we go way back. Uh, Jimmy the Greek and I actually tried to cover poker here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i tell you a funny story before we get to your... Sure. So the Greek and I go to Benny Benyon. Benny was still alive, and that's where they had, and Jack Benyon was running things, and Benny was sitting there at the table, and uh, Amarillo Slim was uh, still with us, Texas Dolly Brunson, Johnny Moe's, Benny Ball wanted to come into town. And we said, look, guys, we can do this, we, but we got to put cameras underneath the table so we show the whole cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That group <laughs> said, no, no, no. That's not going to happen. Well, uh, after a couple of years, they pulled it off the CBS uh, show, and then it came back bigger than ever. But tell us about 1979. Well, you were there for a uh, sports anthology show. I think they called it, what, CBS Sports Spectacular? That was it, Roxy. Right. And um, I think the idea was to try to do a wide world of sports with Jude McKay, um, something similar exactly. to that, right? Well, um, Jack Treetop uh, Strauss was um, sort of a friend of mine. Um, in the sense that you always knew that Jack was going to con you out of something. And we, we were partners in the uh, World Series of Poker. It was a $10,000 buy-in. I had 10% of them. And uh, after the second break, he hardly has any chips left. And with that Texas drawl and that con, he says, Roxy, he says, now here's a chance to press your bet. He says, I got them right where I want them. And I said, nah, Jack, I don't think so. Yeah, put up another 1,000, you get 5%. I said, Jack. When you had a lot of chips, I had 10% for 1,000, right? Now you want to offer me, you have no chips, and you want me to pay 1,000 for 5%. And this is going on, and I'm thinking, boy, how do I get out of this? And all of a sudden, um, uh, your producer pulled him away to do an interview, and I was able to sneak out of the place. So you saved me 1,000. I probably feel like I ought to share it with you, but I think you've done pretty good since then. <laughs> Oh, actually, that's that's great. Now, when you're not setting lines now, and you're, do you still follow mm -hmm. closely? And uh, tell me what you think of where the gaming industry is now compared to those days back in the 70s. Well, we're probably at a crossroads whether the sport um, sports betting can get legalized around the country. There's been a lot of false starts. I, th I think um, in the next two or three years, if something doesn't shake out, either in Congress or a state by state level. Uh, maybe a domino effect where one state gets, uh, goes to the court and gets approval, and then they all start falling over. If it doesn't happen in the next two or three years, we'll probably be back where we were like 20 years ago. But I think this is a, uh, a key time in, in the industry. How important was it to the uh, state of Nevada when they decided to start accepting wagers on UNLV and, and Reno when they made that change? Well, I think the change that most people... Um, don't think about is that it showed, look, we don't have a problem with teams playing here and us taking bets. We think we're the monitors of the integrity. Mm -hmm. I think that was a key thing. Sure, did it add a little? Yeah, a little. But I think the big thing was, look, we, we think we can monitor the integrity. We don't care if they're playing in Nevada or not, that we can handle it. And I think that was a big message. And now, of course, uh, with the Golden Knights coming in here, mm -hmm. uh, this is a major league city starting next mm -hmm. fall because we'll have an NHL team. It is, and uh, Gary Bettman, uh, before he was with the NHL, he was sort of the hatchet man for the NBA and the anti-gambling stance. And they still haven't, uh, I know you talked to Bill Foley earlier, but I, um, to my knowledge, they still haven't carved out what they're going to do with the uh, sports gambling on the Knights games yet. But I thought the state had already said that there will be wagering on the Golden Knights. Yes, but I think the team still has um, an option so many days before the season starts to say they don't want it and then some negotiations might start. So I don't think it's 100% uh, cut right now that they'll be betting. I have a lot of good Canadian friends <laughs> who love to wait. I'm telling you right now, I don't think the Golden Knights will cut it off because uh -huh. you've got those tourists coming in. Oh, I agree. If they come down here from Edmonton, mm -hmm. Vancouver, mm -hmm. all the way out to Montreal, those people are looking to bet a few bob on their hockey team. Well, there's no question about it. I think everybody thinks it's a good idea. Well, you have to still see what Batman wants to do. Um, I know that Canadian games, uh, the Canadian teams come down here will be wild because Las Vegas sometimes is just filled with Canadians, particularly in the wintertime. So it'll be really interesting when those, when those teams play here. Yeah, I'm amazed. Uh, I was talking with well, a barber here at South Point. Mm -hmm. I call him John the Barber. Mm -hmm. 
He bets hockey every Tuesday night. He loves it. He comes oh, in yeah. and looks at it. He's from Buffalo. So uh-huh. you know you know those guys from yeah. Buffalo, yeah. how they follow it. So yeah. before we leave here now, Roxy, what do you like today and why game and over-under? Yeah. Well, I usually don't make selections um, because that's what happens when you book all your life and you make odds. You don't see anything that looks good uh, until, you know, the game moved and you lost. But uh, I've, there's a little bit of a disconnect going on with a lot of Super Bowls. People that like the Falcons, they're betting uh, the Falcons on the um, money line, and people like the Patriots are laying the points. So you do have the Patriots at minus three, but the money line only minus 140. I think that's a good opportunity for anybody who likes the Patriots. They shouldn't be laying the three. They should go in and lay the dollar forty. Thank you so much. You're listening live to the Vegas Stats and Information Network, my guys in the desert.